can't stay flaccid when oh, I'm with really you. Gross. And I love it. <laughs> hey. Ain't that the damn truth? <laughs> and I'm coming. Oh, there we go. That's better. <laughs> What's that? It looks orange. Is that Fanta? Coke. Oh, oh, it was the lighting. The lighting. Yeah, yeah. Weird I was gonna say that label, looks orange. But... Okay. Yeah, it's a Coca Cola. Oh, real quick. I wanted to get the Starlight Coke. I was gonna say, let's talk about that real quick. Yeah, I was gonna. I I wanted to get the Starlight one, and I probably should to like try it and and see if it's good or not or whatever. But it's um, a space flavored for anyone wondering. Yeah, really. Um, I now I now will be able to know what space tastes like. And apparently, it's like a, a berry mint. I think strawberry. Oh, but it's not. It's not a that's... strong mint. The end taste yeah. gives you that freshness. No, that could work. Yeah, yeah, that could work. I like it. I drink it more but i'd have to spend money so i mean <laughs> Ain't that the damn when truth. i stop and get gas during the week i'll probably pick one up if there was hey, let me put it like this yeah. if they sold the 12 pack of it i'd buy it just because mm-hmm. but um it's right. pretty good i'd recommend trying it i like it brian yeah i can't so uh, this is that is very serendipitous okay. that we just started talking about coca-cola mean? Uh, lucky, I okay. guess. It's like a fancy <laughs> word for lucky. Or like coincidentally um, perfect or something. Well, yes, okay. essentially. Um, here's a headline for you. Uh, is if I can find the, the screenshot or whatever. Ah, well, maybe I can't. There we go. Okay. Uh, Pepsi and IHOP have teamed up to make a maple syrup yep. cola. I saw that on Instagram and that sounds awful. <laughs> Like, it sounds so bad. So maple syrup it sounds so gross. is already 99% sugar. Right? It's going to be the it's sweetest so sweet. thing you'll ever eat. It's so drink. sweet. It's, yeah. yeah. It's going to yeah. be way too sweet in my opinion. But I, I also don't. don't have, like I've said, too much of a sweet tooth. So I, mm-hmm. for me. I do. And even that <laughs> sounds <laughs> if, yeah, too like, much. Have you ever gotten just a mouthful of maple syrup when you're eating like pancakes and you like accidentally scoop up too much or anything for me that's too much i'm like oh. admittedly i like that, that but, that's fair but, for me that's too uh, much. that's what i mean like that's too much well, for me i'm like oh. and soda is already super sugary and maple syrup is super sweet so yes. it's like all right fucking you gotta have some kind of like lightness or freshness or like bite yeah, exactly. i think that's why the citric acid works so nicely in soda right because like you know, you're, you're overwhelmed cake. by the sweet, it's but like, then at oh. the end, it's like, mm, let's <laughs> get it, baby. Um, yeah, that's that's that feels like a lot. Welcome. Come on, Pepsi. To episode... Welcome to the Thack and Call. Also, oh, why did they choose oh. IHOP? IHOP so- <laughs> Go ahead. Well, I guess yeah. maple syrup is maple syrup, but like... Did I ever tell you about the time I went to an IHOP? So, like, it, it's not a great story, but, like, <laughs> the, the point of the story is, uh, you know, IHOP is kind of... Now that I'm older, I understand that IHOP is not good. Great, yeah, yeah. Like it's I've it's kind of like a shit diet. Like, yeah, like a yeah, like a like a Denny's <laughs> light or whatever. Um, <laughs> Denny's light, he says. Shut up. But like, I would see these, I would see these commercials for like IHOP, and it's like check out our new double quadruple blueberry raspberry pancake stack or whatever. Double and it's got like it's got like gorgeous like whipped cream on it and like the berries and the syrup and i'm like so as a kid i would see that and be like i want to go to ihop yeah yeah and we never we never had an ihop around here like the closest ihop was not close Mm. so fucking (laughs) one time my parents and i were on vacation down by the the ocean and there was an ihop and i was like can we go can we go can we go and my parents were like i guess all right and then we went there and i was like "Mm, this is fine yeah so like i said not a great story but i think it's just silly that i was so enamored with ihop Mm -hmm. as a kid and now i'm like well it's not great brian Mm. i read a little thing on twitter the other day that uh i don't remember exactly how it went but it's like hey podcasters you should introduce yourself every time you do a podcast and say the title of the podcast i'm brian i'm like hi i welcome to the hack and call everybody (laughs) i'm steve and i'm and he's brian i'm also i'm brian Where he's Steve. That's the joke. I'm Steve. We used to do we did that for like Steve. the first like fifteen. Yeah, episodes. we did that for like the first couple episodes. But in all fairness, episodes. we had to inter- like what the podcast was at that we, point. Right. No one. Yeah. No one knew who we were. <laughs> no one. Still and knows still, who no we... one knows who we are. <laughs> God damn it. As long as we're on the same page, baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Farted shit, Good Brian. Stuff, Brian, man. what have you been doing, my guy? Um, what have you been? What What game have you been playing? Wow. Who Who <laughs> Who could get? What a setup. No. Um, what a setup. Halo, yeah, give Halo us give Wars us your ad- an Elden Ring. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Did I? Yeah, was it? 
No, it was this week we had the game. I can talk about the game. So we had a match in Halo Wars that was genuinely, like, interesting. Um, I told you about yeah, it on the that's fun. Discord or something. Yes. Yep. But just as a quick rundown, because I, I think it's... Because a lot of RTS is kind of... I'm not going to say failed to make you play tactically, but, like, there generally is sort of, like, in a lot... One sort of tactic that's always going to work. Be, like, it's going to vary from game to game. Um, and in Halo Wars, it's usually build two scarabs or six vultures just get as many uber units on the field as you can and roll um yes, sir so nick and i were playing a 2v2 on docks in halo wars uh, against two legendaries i was brute chieftain nick was forge and we were against a prophet and an arbiter which was odd uh, surprising i should say because we always leave the ai on random so we're not deciding who it is and oddly enough it was right. just there was no duplicates or anything um mm. and Immediately we got butt fucked. Like we didn't lose, but we were like, ah, this is gonna be a rough game. And so naturally, <clears throat> Nick was like, how about I go defensive and you try and like mount an offense? Because Nick's Nick's uh, admittedly good at like the defending aspect of the Halo Wars the games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yep. um, I was like, yeah, no problem. So I built a bunch of brutes, and he built a bunch of uh, cobras. And I was like, I'll be able yes. to handle. You handle the vehicles. I'll handle like the troops and stuff. And we're like, yeah, this is gonna work. And then about like eight to nine minutes in we were just overwhelmed um and we kept pushing them back like it was a slow push forward they pushed us back slow push forward mm -hmm. they pushed us back and then eventually got to the point where they had scarabs and we we didn't um so we got rushed by two well not rushed really but you know it, it was probably like 20 minutes into the game they hit us with two scarabs and luckily i had one built at the time nick had his cobras and i had an army of like 25 brutes alongside it uh so immediately we did kill the scarab and i almost lost mine at the time so i had it retreat and heal and i sent my brutes on the offensive and i was like nick this game is going very poorly i'm gonna do the cheese tactic i'm gonna build two scarabs 10 engineers and we're just gonna wipe and he was like yeah you know this is getting really hard let's do it that didn't work for the first time ever and it really threw me off uh so they ended up rushing yeah. us with four scarabs because they were two covenant uh yeah so we managed to push all of that back and I lost a scarab in the process and I was like, Nick, that's not going to work. Like, if their AI is set to just keep building Uber units, I don't know what to do. Um, yeah. So I, what we ended up doing is I left my scarab in defense. I built an army of 10 Banshees and for the first time ever, hit and run tactics played a role. I traveled the Banshees with boost from base to base and when they responded, they boost away and go to another one and it felt very cool to do that because I've I've never had a hit and run really work or have to be progressively used. Usually you can use it once yeah. and just kill a base because the yeah. AI won't respond. But they did. And it was cool. It was just this constant back and forth. And at one point, this really threw me off. Um, and I need to make mention of this because I've never had the AI do this. Nick had Cobras mm -hmm. out front of... So it, it's two bases side by side on the map docks. And Nick had his Cobras in front of his base here and one in the middle. And I had my Scarab in the middle to defend. And they actually rushed us with their units on the right-hand side where we didn't have defenses. And it was intentional, 100%. And I yeah. almost lost my base. And it was, like, I lost, like, four of the six buildings and half of its health. And it was wow. it was just unique. I was like, oh, my God, the AI learned to do that? That's really yeah, weird. Yeah, right? Um, and other than that... I've been playing Elden Ring, which no one's surprised about. And I, I still yeah. I still think it's too early to go into talking about that game. I've been having an amazing time with it. Uh, I just don't want to, like, spoil too much. I mean, I know I did spoiler tags when I talked about the guy last week. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, probably in a couple of months I'll start talking about it more. It's just it's, yeah. it's a very cool game. Steve, what have you been up to? <laughs> wow, I've been... <laughs> so, so uh, time to talk about two games that no one's going to know. Um, uh, I can assure you that zero people are going to know what the fuck I'm talking about. Um, the first one being Lionel Train Town. What in the frick frack and patty whack heck is that, Stove? Well, um, it's, so Lionel is like a, a company that does like model trains. Um, and Lionel Train Town was a game made in i think the year 2000 by sierra interactive and under the 3d ultra label because it was like just when ultra. games were starting yeah 3d <laughs> ultra lionel train town and so basically is it like what Thomas it is the tank engine? sorry you were gonna say it shut up no 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 no. that's all right i'll actually show you some later if you want <laughs> it's 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 very cute 
Um, so it's it's a kids game kind of. So it's you you have these little maps and they have train tracks on them and you control the locomotives and like drive them along the tracks and like pick up cars and pick up loads and uh, <laughs> deliver them where they're supposed to go. And like so so that's like half of the game, right? And the other half of the game is like puzzles but in with like a backdrop of trains. So it's like, oh, match the items oh, okay. or or like so it's do very the much math or or, you know, like solve these anagrams. But you have to like move the train cars that have the letters in them, like to okay, yeah, into yeah. the right order or whatever. So. So, yeah, it's 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 the first levels are like. Designed for like uh, first graders. Yeah. yeah. So, <clears throat> you know, it's a kid. It's a kid's game. Uh but then the later levels are actually fairly challenging. Like I definitely could not have beaten a lot of them as a kid. Like <laughs> I, I needed my intellect, my adult yeah, brain yeah. to do that. Um, and they're not, and they're not certainly not hard, hard per se. But it's like I get to the end and I'm like, okay, yeah, I, I did that well. But like, it, had I been a little less on the ball, I might have failed that. Mm. Um, so if you're wondering why is Steve playing this, um, it's the first video game that I ever played. Uh, <laughs> well, no. It was I'm surprised you remember prior cool. to my, 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 I remember it because I loved it so much. <laughs> like it was, it was, I was so obsessed with Lionel train town when I was a kid. Mm. Cause I was so obsessed with trains. I fucking love trains. Dude, same. Like at As my, kid, my like... parents would, yeah, my <laughs> parents would take me to the rail lines sometimes and like watch the trains go by. And I would like know all the names of like all the different cars and shit. Mm. I'd be like, Oh, that's like a CXS HG. 35 of uh, the rail humper or whatever Sick. like fucking you know so so it's it's a puzzle game it's very much a puzzle game like you you maneuver your trains around it's all about uh making sure you have enough fuel making sure you have enough time maneuvering the cars and whatnot so that they can fit into the different loading zones and shit that you can uh get it's it's but it's very it's it's like a little brain bender puzzle game kind of thing and it's very fun um it's it's just very much like comfort food like i i see why i loved it as a kid yeah yeah um also it's got like funny little things in it because like there's like little voiceovers and shit about like the different scenarios so it's like oh santa uh, needs help delivering all the presents but there's avalanches on the rail line, so you better clear them out and deliver all the presents in time for Christmas or whatever. Mm. But they do it in these, like, silly, like, accents and, like, dumb voices and stuff. Like, it's super stupid. But mm. it's, it's like, all right, here we go. Uh, mm. And um, <laughs> the main voice is, like, this, like, vaguely southern, like, train conductor guy that's always, like, all aboard and shit yeah. like that. Um but he whenever you whenever you crash a train which it's not a gruesome thing by any means like you know you can crash the trains and fail the level yeah, yeah. it's certainly not like derails and like Boom. people die yeah, by yeah. any means right but like <laughs> you always crash the train and then he's like that's a fender bender and that's, uh, yeah. that's one way and fender. fender bender it's it's silly. It's super silly. But as a kid, it scared the shit out of me. I hated it so much because one, I didn't want to fail. I didn't want to fail the level. I was afraid of like getting it wrong or mm. whatever. And then like his voice was kind of like like adultish and like scolding you a little bit, which I don't care now. But as a kid, I was like, no, I don't like it. So like <laughs> I would always drive the trains on the slowest possible speed mm. and like creep through the levels in order to <laughs> not crash and yeah, not yeah. get the fender bender thing. Um, good golly gosh. Th what a time. What a time. Yeah, I'll, I'll show you a little bit later. It's cute. Mm -hmm. um, and the other game that I've been playing, not equally not good, but equally comfort food for the stove soul is uh, Mega Man X Command Mission. Um, oh. Now, you guys probably know what Mega Man is, uh, or at least have an idea of what Mega Man is. Uh, but Mega Man X Command Mission is different because unlike the other every other Mega Man game, uh, it's a turn-based RPG instead of a fucking action game. Mm. So <laughs> here we go. You have Mega Man and Zero and Axel and a bunch of others that, that are original to the game. And you go through the worlds on the overworld and then you run into like turn-based battles and the enemies pop up and you fight 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 and and there's a story and it's it's 
everything you expect out of an RPG. <laughs> the combat system is pretty straightforward. Kind of the only, like... The only real, like, twist, necessarily, is uh, that... And it's I, I say twist in quotation marks. It's really not that complex. So, like, every turn... You have two sub weapons and a main weapon, and you can fire both of your sub weapons and then fire your main weapon once, and that's your turn, right? Mm. Um, now, firing the sub weapons consumes weapon energy, and you regenerate a certain amount of weapon energy every turn. It's measured in a percentage, so you usually generate like twenty five percent per turn, mm. and then your weapons, you know, cost a different amount depending on how good they are. Right. Right. Or you can opt to just use the main weapon, which costs nothing, and stockpile your weapon energy. And then once you hit 50% or over, you can use the action trigger, which just gives you like a little mini game that's unique to each character and results in like a special attack. Mm. And the more weapon energy you have, generally the better the attack is, the, the action trigger yeah. attack. Sometimes like, depending on what it is right it may may not be better it just might be easier mm. so mm. like oh you have to mash these buttons a bunch but now you have 15 seconds to do it instead yeah, of yeah. 10 or whatever um or you have to match these reels on a slot machine but they're spinning slow now that you have 100 percent. so like you know Ooh, so yeah. it, it, it's not it's not complex there's not much intuition to it it's just there the whole game is just kind of there the story is not great um, it's kind of dumb. The dialogue is not amazing. There's really nothing about it that's particularly standout, but gosh dang, I played it as a kid and it, it's just, it's super comforting. It's like, yep, this is, this is just, I can just turn my brain off and just pew, pew, pew my guys and fucking Bra. run around the, the little yeah. world and then run into a random battle every four seconds and fucking, <laughs> you don't like that uh, Dude, it's something like you. You have stats, and they just they don't matter. You, you have levels, and they don't matter. Sick. Like there's n n nothing about it that matters. It just fucking it just happens. Yeah, right. Uh, so so I've been doing that. I've been playing Subnautica, um, which we've already kind of know about. It's very fun. I like it a lot. Um, I'm starting to get to a point where I'm stalling a little bit. Like I don't really know where to go now. Um, I've pretty much got all the things I need to get. I just need the big sub, mm. Cyclops. But I'm going to all the places that the Wikipedia tells me to go to to find that shit. Yeah, yeah. And they're not there. So, <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah, so so I'm playing some sub so blah, 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 blah. Um, yeah, that's what I've been doing. That's my, that's my life. Woo. And, oh, and Brian, hmm. there's one other thing yeah. that we need to talk about <laughs> that we're doing. Uh, and by doing, I mean uh, something that we're going to be starting later uh, today. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, we we are playing um, a Dungeons and Dragons campaign for the Yay. first time together. Woo. Yeah, it is. It like is a, a Pokemon. One shot, so yeah, yeah, it's a Pokemon homebrew uh, D and D campaign. Um, there was a like 5e pokemon system that was available for free online for a while and then Nintendo game freak said, fucking fuck you. fucking copyright struck that shit which doesn't make any it's a if they were it's gonna the, it, first of all no one making money off of it people that are just doing one this. that <laughs> right there's there's no 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 charge for any of this shit. There's no nothing. No, it's not like it was a subscription where oh you can get the rules if you pay for our like it was right like, right. Here's the you rules. Know, play it. Here's the rule book for twenty nine ninety nine or whatever. Yeah, no, right. Yeah. Just, exactly. Here's no. a PDF file. Enjoy. And and yeah and there are the Pokemon the most valuable media franchise on the fucking planet <laughs> said fuck and you decided decided to say fuck you. It's eighty. Uh, and uh luckily our dm is very good and we yeah we are kind of brewing this and by we i mean she is yep. kind of brewing this <laughs> up out of her brain um and and just coming up with it on the fly and and it's not 5e at all but that's fine five eggs i don't really i'm not a huge five egg fan i don't um, know what that means i mean i know what it means it's, i know it's the version but i, I don't know what yeah it's, it's just fifth you. edition yeah, yeah i yeah. think it's dungeons and dragons fifth edition yeah it's just like <laughs> There's, it, there's so the much emphasis is. on like the stats and the dice rolls and like oh, okay. there's fifty there's 
50 trillion different abilities that of you course. can have yeah, yeah. that like affect different things and i get it on the one hand right because you want to you're trying to make combat that approximates real life fighting right in in a paper and pencil game so there would be 50 million different things to keep track of in combat like if you're fighting a guy IRL you know oh. in a fantasy in a fucking fantasy world like he might just whip out some ability that you've never heard of yeah right that just one shots you Skull like it, of that could happen blood, and you're like, okay. right like <laughs> fucking, <Backing> up. <laughs> yeah so yeah so but yeah i'm much i am much more into the role playing part yeah, of the rpg um that's much more fun to me than the combat itself um i feel that brother and just the and, one shot and, that we did uh I had three turns where I didn't do anything because I rolled like a two every fucking time, and I was like, okay, mm -hmm. and then it was over, mm -hmm. and I was like, well, yeah, good thing I, the team I helped. things. <laughs> I contributed. Woo! <laughs> so I agree. I definitely prefer the uh, mm -hmm. the uh, role playing aspect and like the ex exploration and stuff. And like, uh, I like rolling when it's like, oh, do a perception check or whatever. Like, yeah, that's yeah, fun. yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, yeah. combat. Eh. Fucking take mm. it or leave it. But that's what we're up to, and it's going to be fun. Steve also has yeah, a piece of news he hasn't announced us. yet. Um, where uh, we're no longer doing the Pokemon Emerald run uh, in on Steve's stream, and we're going to fire Red Leaf Green. <laughs> I thought, I, just in case anyone didn't hear. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> so, so I've been playing Pokemon Emerald and where Brian picks my team. And when I booted it up the other day, uh, it just decided that it wasn't going to work anymore. It just decided that, hey, the file is gone. Your save file is gone. <coughs> Go fuck yourself. And it's like, well, all right. So you ever it's cool. tune into Steve's channel for some Pokemon gameplay uh, with me and yeah, I'm there? It's not going to be Emerald super, anymore. <laughs> yeah, we're going to be doing Fire Red now. It's it's Pokemon Fire Red, but Brian picks my team. And Woo! There we go. Woo! Big, big Steve idiot file. That, nah. See, it is big Steve idiot file <laughs> Oh, I didn't now, even now. that, didn't I? <laughs> That's right. You know what I, you know what I didn't do? Go on. Bust. I didn't check my recent file. Well, I haven't done that today. Sure. All right, cool. Well, anyway, so. Huh. Huh. Are you checking something? Huh. No. Oh, I'm okay. Um. I'm Gucci. So I realized I have a pet peeve that's probably, like, okay, unfair. Mm -hmm. So, like, it's one of those things where I get, like, absurdly internally angry over it, and mm -hmm. I shouldn't. And I mean to the point where, like, it, like I'm upset at people for it. So one yep. thing that really bothers me a lot is people that mispronounce words, and it, it's specifically when it's in a setting where... You have no biz. Like you should know how to pronounce this word. Um, mm -hmm. And the biggest example. So if I didn't, if I if I was like, oh, my name is S Steve or whatever. No, like, but like if I mean like genuinely, people don't understand. Like you know it's Steve, but mm -hmm. you could make a joke. But if like mm -hmm. you know, if, if you were literally like, huh, gas is flammable, like at Chris's yeah. bit. But if you were mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm drives me up mm. the wall and uh really i realized it because i was in class this week and um i'm in a master's program mind you mm -hmm. uh so you, you should know science in medical terms mm -hmm. um that's fair yeah you, you you might have a point there all right and uh carry on a person i'm not gonna like call them out or anything obviously I'm not no asshole, of course but they were yeah, giving yeah. a presentation we have to do paired presentations and like this person oh, yeah, it was just in a presentation. Yeah, this oh. person just every fourth sentence had a word they couldn't pronounce genuinely, and they'd have to stop and ask the teacher, "How do you say this?" And it's like you're in a fucking master's program. What do you mean? Like, yeah. one of them was for the drug midazolam, and mm. I know drugs have weird, but this is literally spelled M I D A Z O L A M midazolam, yeah. and she goes. Midas lamb? How do you pronounce that? And then the teacher goes, Midas lamb. And she goes, oh, like it's spelled. <laughs> what the fuck does that mean? No. I, I, I was literally in my brain like, what does that mean? Oh, like, yes. Like that's the point spelled. of spelling things. Like, yes. Something. Yes. And it's been like that since I was a kid, though. Like, even in eighth grade in high school, in, like, English class, it would be like, you mm. know, the word, like, 
I don't know, turnbuckle, and people would be like, mm-hmm. trunk buckle, and I'm like, mm-hmm. did you forget first through fifth grade? Yeah. Just sound it out, brother. You could, something about that, yeah. like, makes me mm-hmm. absurdly blood boiled, like, yeah. like, it puts, like, a target mark on that person's head, and I'm like, I don't like you anymore, sorry. And it shouldn't, uh, granted, I know that, but I, I can't Right, right. <laughs> no, I get it. I, I, I'm, I have kind of an offshoot of that. Um, which I see all the time in the online world because we're a text message fucking generation, right? Like, that's how we communicate is through texts and, like, Facebook posts and twi- tweet. I almost Correct. just said Twitter posts. Tweets and fucking shit like that, right? It and, and let me preface this by saying I'm not upset at the people for getting it wrong. Like, you are you are entitled to get it wrong. Mm-hmm. Like, I get it. Not everyone has had the same education. Yeah, yeah. Not everyone has had the same upbringing. <laughs> like, it is, it, it, it is, not everyone is as good at writing as other people. I'm, that's fine. You are absolutely allowed to get it wrong. What I don't like, what bothers me, is when people have a spelling or grammar error that they get wrong in multiple different ways <laughs> in the same context. Yeah, yeah. And what I mean by that is like there. Uh there 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 and there is definitely one of them your and your. your. Yeah. And and your. again, I'm not upset at you that oh you used y o u apostrophe r e instead of y o u r when <laughs> that's fine. I get it. Not everyone knows that rule and you're not you're not required to know it. I get it. But it's like if if you use your y o u r or that's the word you're supposed to use mm. three times in a sentence and you spell it y o u r twice and y o u apostrophe r e once <laughs> third, yeah. that makes me insane. <laughs> that makes me insane. Like or, or 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 if you're using answer. if you're trying if you're trying to say there as in it's over there t h e r e and you use you spell it t h e r e once t h e i r once and t h e y apostrophe r e once I'm like I I want to kill you I it's want like, dude it's like I, right because I can because I absolutely get it that people don't necessarily know that rule right, and they yeah, can yeah. get it wrong yeah absolutely I'm not that smart about a lot of things fucking I get it. I happen to be good at, like, linguistics. That's just how my brain works. That's fine. I, I understand that not everyone knows that rule. But the fact that they can't go, oh, I'm saying the same thing here three times, mm. but I'm using three different words. The fact that that's not a thought in their brain <laughs> Maybe is, like... They're just shocked uh, at it. One of these is right, so fuck it. Yeah, it's yeah. Awesome. Honestly, though. And, like, yeah, you know, like, sometimes it'll be, like, autocorrect or whatever. And I'm like, yeah, all right. But, like... Dude. Oh. oh my god, I want to kill people when I see that shit happen. And again, I shouldn't be it's not yeah, important. It, it, doesn't it's like... it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And yet here I am being mm-hmm. like, ah, I'm gonna fucking kill someone. So anyways, I started blasting the uh yeah, really though. Danny the, DeVito's the, a bit. That's the one. Frank Clark. Frank. I don't know. Frank his last O'Donohue. Name. Yeah, Frank. Frank, Frank. Someone. Yeah. Frank Charlie. Ah, <sighs> Frank Charlie. Uh, Rob. Uh, Piper. Whatever the fourth one. Deirdre. That's her name, right? No, a D. I hate. Well, they call her D. Oh, maybe it is Deirdre. Yeah, Deirdre. Deirdre. I fucking, I fucking hate Deirdre. <laughs> all I can think of is Skyrim. I, I, the Adric armor. I'm like, yeah. Hey, it's like yeah, all, yeah, that's yeah, all like, I can think of. AKA the way cooler armor. It's um, so cool. That's a badass set of armor. Yes, sir. and I'm not even really an armor. Like I can appreciate good armor, but like I'm more mm. of a like in that like you know I don't I guess mythological is the setting of Skyrim. What would you call it? Fantasy. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah like medieval high yeah, fantasy kind of. I'm deal. more of like a, a robes kind of aesthetic guy. Like I yeah, prefer yeah. decked out robes. But well, even I was going like, to say that you're 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 I'm a wizard, wizard. guy, yeah. so oh. you're the you're the magic guy. But even so Deirdre armor is like God. That's cool. That is fucking cool armor. <laughs> Dude, I actually so it wasn't recently, but it was like it was like maybe a year or two ago. I was playing Skyrim, and I actually got Dragon Bone armor for the first time. Oh, for the first time, it's good. Which, which, right? Yeah, like, like that's weird, right? Because like, I don't know, Skyrim. That's yeah, yeah. one of the fucking well, things you, is you can't buy it. You do have to smith it, don't you? I'm pretty yes. sure. 
You so have you to smith it with like dragon bones and dragon or scales. I don't remember the level. 100. Oh, is it 100? 100. Oh. Yep, full smithing. You got to have full smithing to get it. And uh, so I like when I used to play Skyrim on my, my axe boner and shit, like I, I never got all the way up to 100 smithing. And then finally I was like, oh, you know what? I'm just going to do it. Like, yeah, yeah. Because I like making my own armor. And you get all kinds of resources in the world. Yeah, yeah. So making armor out of them, or weapons and shit, and selling that shit is a nice little source of money, besides all the other loot and money that you get <laughs> in the game. So, oh man. It's re- I'm pretty sure statistically, though, I think Diedrich armor is equal. I don't think they're different. Yeah, I think you might be right. Which is sad, because um, it's like, you'd go out of your way to make dragon. It should be, like, the best. But it's also not as cool, though. I don't like the aesthetic as much, personally. As a... Yeah, it's it's fine. Yeah. It's alright. It's a little underwhelming. It's cool enough, but it's not like DH like, oh holy The Nether has come to slay me. Here we go. Dramora Lord. Summon Dramora Lord. Those are have you ever summoned those, Steve? I was not a big summon guy. Um They kinda of break the game. I I was never very much of a magic e boy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which we know I don't like having my offensive ability tied to a resource cost. Mm. Um, unless that resource is very readily available. Yeah, yeah. And, and like, I, it's generally not so much of a problem late game, right? Because by then you have access to all kinds of potions and regen items and shit, but like early game, when it's like, oh, I know uh, sparks and fucking, (laughs) you know, (laughs) I can, I can cast it for four seconds and then (laughs) I'm fucked, you know, like it's a little, it's a little more, it's a little more of a problem. It's... Mages are definitely, like, I get the balance in games of why they have to be the scaling. Because, like, mm-hmm. if not, they would just be the easy mode throughout the entirety of the game. Which... Really? I mean, I, I guess there's nothing inherently wrong with that, but... You know, it, it is better to just make everything balanced than have a difficulty setting around it so everything can be easier or harder, I guess. Right? Um, but... Skyrim, I feel, is particularly punishing to if you want to go full mage, like not battle mage, where you're like one handed in a spell. But if you want to go like, oh, I yeah. only want to cast spells this playthrough, you're not gonna mm-hmm. have a very good time for a couple of hours. Um, yeah. I'm spaghetti dog. Okay, so um, apparently Costco is now selling a 27 pound bucket of macaroni and cheese. Ew. So, how if you've ever wanted 27? macaroni and cheese from a bucket? You say 27 pounds. <laughs> 20, two seven baby <laughs> how are you supposed to even eat it i guess, I guess it's for parties but I, it's that. gotta be for like for like you know like oh i have like 20 people coming over even, well even then I that's more than a pound of bag and pounds, cheese brother. that's fucking that's gotta be that's gotta be for like like events or something yeah and shit. yeah that's what i'm saying for like that don't give a shit about quality it has um, to because, like, if you're buying Costco mac and cheese out of a bucket, yeah. uh, I don't know that it's going to be all that good. It's not. But, um, surprise, surprise. Am I still lagging? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, baby. I, fu- I wish I knew. Hi. Ho. Ho, baby. Ho. Oh, Brian, I can't believe I forgot to tell you all about this. Go on. Um. Well, the other thing that's been going on in Steve's life, um, my roommate brought home some chicks. Oh, yeah, little Mo. <laughs> and, and I don't mean girls, by the way. Little, I mean uh, little, little baby chickens. Uh, <laughs> so so the story is that he has a friend who is a uh, pregnant and is going to have a bebe. And then uh, she, in her pregnancy brain, was like, ooh, I have to nest or whatever. So she bought, like, little chicks. And then her husband came home and was like, absolutely not. Fucking not (laughs) a chance we're keeping these chicks. So she's like, I don't know what to do with them. And my roommate was like, we'll take them. That's very nice of him. So apparently you're allowed to have up to 18 chickens in a residential area without without there being any kind of issue. Okay. Um, so we're build a little coop for them in the back. Yeah, they're, and they're like, they're babbins right now. Yeah, like yeah. They're little, they are fresh out the womb right now. Like, fuck, or out the egg, I guess. Egg. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they're cute, though. They're really adorable. They're little. They're they're V little, mm. and I want to hold one. Uh, but, like, yeah, they're in this little box downstairs. Uh, or, like, a, like, a, like, a tub, like a, like a storage yeah, yeah. tub. Um, with, like, a heat lamp and stuff in there. And so I came down one night, 
I think it was Friday night, and there was this tub set up, and it had a, a big... Re- and the, the heat lamp is red. It's, like, very red. And I'm like, oh, that's odd. Strange. But, like, so I didn't really... I didn't really fucking pay it any mind. Um, you know, I just got my water and went back upstairs and kept playing games. And so... Uh, and I would hear, like, beep, beep, birds? <laughs> yeah, right? I was hearing, like, the, the chicks peeping and shit, and I... And I'm like, oh, you know, maybe we have, like, a bird in... I went up to the attic the other day, and there was a bird in the attic. So, like... Yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh, maybe we have, like, a nest of birds in the attic or in the in the, the side of the building or whatever, you know. And then... Or maybe I'm just losing my mind, finally. Um, but then I came downstairs while my roommate was there. He's like, did you see the chicks? I'm like, the what now? Yeah. <laughs> the yeah, what? squeamy. me. <laughs> say, say again no but they're cu- they're cute i'm like i'm not sure what we're gonna do with them in the winter because it gets cold here and Correct. like i don't know that they're gonna enjoy being in a coop outside in the winter call me crazy and also not. i don't know that we're gonna have full ass grown chickens in the house during They'd the winter be aggressive <laughs> um so so we'll see but right right we have chimkins now so we're gonna have fresh chimkim eggs that's kind of cool. And yeah, <clears throat> and I will I will something. So bum, 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 bum. Oh, it's it's it, everyone. It's official. Mm-hmm. Golf season is just about upon us. Brother, uh, let's I don't go. Know how many if any of our listeners golf, but uh I do. And I'm just very excited. I went to the range today. Yes, and bitch. Still can't hit my driver at all. I, mm-hmm. I, I can't. I don't know. I have a mental block. I just can't do it. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But I'm just excited to get back out there. For those of you out there that don't like golf and don't see the fun in golf, uh, I suggest trying it with a group of the boy squads or the girl squads yes. if you're a girl. Agree. Agree. Because uh, golfing alone is not particularly fun. Um, Agree. But when you're with a full squad and you're all just having a good time, or not even a full squad, like two people, anything, yeah. it's just such a, it's a good day out, and I'm <laughs> Someone excited. Someone that you can shoot the shit with and drink yeah. a beer and fucking just, yeah. I'm so, like, ready, because, you know, I've been in my apartment for six months now. Um, yes, sir. Well, inside, forced to be inside because of winter, and Got it's, it it's finally like, inside. whoa, it's time to, like, go out and just enjoy oh, some warm yeah. weather instead of it being 14 out yeah i'm just excited for that man well are you excited for it to be 21 tomorrow or whatever is it it's cool yeah, something like that well maybe here anyway i don't know about you let's check this podcast is now weathercast this is the um, podcast weathercast it's gonna be 30 tomorrow high of 25 tomorrow let's go bless <sighs> you brother thank you thank you so speaking of pet peeves go on <laughs> dad sneezes Woo! steve hates my sneezes <laughs> i don't hate your sneezes i don't hate them yet oh, i'm lagging Fucking. already oh brian not like this discord is using too much um, go ahead yeah yeah uh no i i there are people in my life that have very particular super loud sneezes yeah um and i don't say anything when they happen <laughs> yeah yeah uh uh because i don't want to be an asshole correct yeah but oh my god, I hear them and I'm like, just exhale the stress, Steve. Just, <laughs> just breathe it in and breathe it out. Fucking dude, it drives me up the fucking wall. You want to be like, could you take it down a fucking notch? Really, really though. And uh, or or people that sneeze really loud just to make noise. Not well. <laughs> just to make so sound. I. Hmm. I was gonna say, yeah, so I guess that covers people that sneeze loud on purpose and people that don't sneeze loud on purpose, which is a hundred percent of people that sneeze loud. Right. So I guess we could simplify this by just <laughs> saying I hate people that sneeze loud, except right. for Brian. So <laughs> fucking Hopefully uh uh I don't know what happened in the past couple months, man, but they're all shotguns now and I don't yes, know sir. why because I used to be yep. perfectly fine at being able to hold them back. And yep. now what I do it hurts. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so that's cool no bueno yeah it's it's rough dude Um, all right so this is so this is a philosophicast question um this is this is put on your put on your philosophy caps we're gonna talk about some philosophy here uh is a good thing done for a bad reason still a good thing 
So so like so like I have I I I give I give five thousand dollars to a charity, but not because oh I want the people in need to have the five thousand yeah, yeah. dollars. Just because I want the charity to go. Oh my God, Steve, you're so great. You're wow, so generous. Thank you right, so much. Right. Here, have like a little plaque or whatever, you know, mm. because I want the fucking updates, you know. So right, right. so is is doing that good thing for a selfish reason still a good thing um i say yes i mean just in the sense of objectively it's good right so would that charity be better if it didn't have the five thousand dollars i mean mm -hmm. Not that's really. that's that's my thought. That's my train of right. thought. If I'm if I'm the person in need, if I'm the homeless person or the hungry person that's getting fed by the fucking food bank, I don't give a shit where the money came from. Right. Thank you, fucking like, okay, thank you for the food. Thank you for the... another couple days. Cool. Right. Exactly. You know, it's uh, I'm pretty sure in most situations the answer is even though if it's obnoxious, it's like oh. Of course, yes. this fucker's donating yes. ten thousand or you know right. fifty thousand dollars because he has to prove how much he cares, even though like he doesn't or whatever. Like mm -hmm. it's obnoxious, but is it still good? I mean, yeah, mm -hmm. I guess. Yes, I, I, I agree. Is. Yeah, I I think so too. I I don't know. I I'm sure there are people that like disagree. Like you know, like, not to like call people out or whatever. If you do disagree, but. I'm sure there are people that just can't see past their own train of thought of being their angry own morality, at that person. Yeah, yeah of being yeah. like, well, they're not even doing it for the right reason. They shouldn't do it. And it's like, not really. I mean, you're right, in the in the sense of uh, it's obnoxious. Yeah, of course, but it's still good. like like all the stupid TikTok and stuff where it's like, I'm gonna prove how much I love homeless people, and they go donate food. Even though this person has never done this before in their life and won't do it again, mm -hmm. at least for that day, they're giving people food. Even if it is yeah. just for, like, the 50,000 views they'll get from that one thing or yes. whatever. No, and I, I get that, right? Like, every time I see, like, an organization that's like, oh, yeah, we made a charitable donation to, you know, yeah, like, yeah. every time you see, like, oh, the, the Tennessee Titans are like, oh, check out this little documentary where Ryan Tannehill goes and gives fucking, you know, visits cancer kids at a hospital or whatever yeah, yeah. i'm like that's good right like that's inherently a good thing you know that like oh he's donating his time to go make you know kids smile that are going through really horrible things like that's cool but like the fact that the company then has to go oh look what we did like yeah, look at yeah. this charity thing that we did it's like the only reason you're doing that is so people will pat you on the back for it of there's course. if you actually gave a shit about if, if your motivation was just I want to help people. You wouldn't have to say anything about it. You just do it. <laughs> so, so yeah, yeah. no, no, yeah. I, I get it. And and yet, and yet, are the cancer kids going to give a shit? No, exactly. That, right. That that the Titans are there filming it and being like, "Oh, look at how great we are." Like, I mean, if if Tannehill, that's kind of one. That's like a weird one, right? I don't know why I'm picking Ryan Tannehill out of everybody, but like, fuck you. Just kidding, if Ryan. if Derek if Derek Henry goes to like a kid a children's <clears throat> hospital and like visits the the sick kids, like if he's doing it to make himself look good, that's kind of rough, right? Mm -hmm. Because then you're donating your time, which is maybe a little more tainted by the fact that mm -hmm. you're not doing it for the right reason. Yeah, yeah. Does like if yeah. if if you're if you're if you're donating your time. And you're you obviously don't want to be there, but you're just doing it because it's like a nice thing or whatever, and mm -hmm. you want to feel good or whatever. Yeah, that's going to be noticeable. If it's just like handing someone like a hundred dollars and being like, "There you go, man." It's like, "All right, cool, thank you." Whatever, yeah, yeah. whatever you did that for, that big help. But like, <laughs> if it's like, oh, "I don't really want to be here," but I'm going to go say hi to the kid. Like, the kid's going to know. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, but, like, if the Titans are there, like, filming it, like, oh, this will make a great PR package or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, Derrick Henry actually wants to be there and, like, actually wants to yeah, help yeah. make the kids smile. Like, who cool. gives a shit? Yeah. The fuck that, fuck the Titans for it. But that, that good act is still a good act. For sure. Um, I agree. I, I, yeah, I don't know. It's I just it's, annoying. Think... It's more, 
I think it's more annoying just because the the internet has changed people, and <laughs> in general, not for the better. I would say. Oh, I would agree. Um, <laughs> and it's, that's that's yeah, pretty like, straightforward. It's just like okay, like I, I I don't know. I I don't get it, and like I would say like oh, like I'm just not part of, but I am obviously part of the generation that does care about this stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but I still just don't quite get the 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 need for strangers approval on the internet yeah um Mm. but i mean you know there's nothing inherently wrong with wanting people's i I guess it's everyone wants like that that claim to fame like of oh people know who i am i like because everyone throughout history you know it's everyone wants a legacy right like yes no one wants to be lost to history but right that's not like a concern of mine. Mm-hmm. I, I yeah, guess. Well, not to be like humble. Oh, I, like I'm so humble. Like, brat, hashtag yeah, humble. Brat. It's, yeah. It's just, <laughs> like that's never been a, a thing. That's really been. It's like a, a fucking people. The history remembers like point three percent of everyone that's ever existed. Like even if you are famous on TikTok right now, mm-hmm. no one's gonna remember you in fifty years, probably. Dude, like, like look matter. at. Look at how big, and this is a weird example to pull out of thin air, but it's one that pertains to you and I. Mm. The fucking, I don't even, I don't even remember his name. The fucking, the fucking whip Nene guy. Fucking. Oh, now watch me whip. Watch me whip. Yeah, Yeah, watch me Nene. No one, he's, he's, he's a nobody. No. And that, that was like the biggest song Mm -hmm. for like two months. He was on top of the fucking charts. And now no one knows who the fuck he is or what he's doing. No. And I don't like, even know. He was like 16, right, at the time or yeah, something? Yeah, he was super young. He was super young. He was way too young to be that famous. Oh, for sure. I um, don't know what he's up to now, but... So, and I, I think there are... I think it's weird, right? Because I'm in this, like... I'm in the business of getting people to notice me on social media, right? right like, right. I, I, I do social media posts for companies to try to get people to notice them. And I do my own content to try to get people to notice me. And so I think there are healthy ways to do that. And there are, you know, there are people that are like, yeah, I want to, this is what I love to do. I love playing games on Twitch or like, I love making YouTube videos and like, I want to try to monetize it. I want to try to make a living off of it. So I have to get people to watch and tune in or listen or download or whatever. Right. Mm. And so I think there's, there are, there are contained ways to do that because like a lot of the people that I see doing that in my circle, couldn't give a shit outside of that circle <laughs> right, if right. people interact mm-hmm. not interact with them that's a weird way to put it but like if if people fucking follow them like comment subscribe whatever yeah, yeah. Like. and so i i'm venturing a guess here while we're on the philosocast yeah, yeah i'm venturing a guess and i don't really have anything to back this up this is just kind of a hunch um but i think it has a lot to do with your upbringing i really do I, I think mean, I'm sure because does, I yeah. because I feel like a lot of the people that I see that I feel like a lot of the people that I see that are like uh, well adjusted and don't give a shit about whether or not people whether or not their fucking TikTok got like sixty yeah, yeah. million fucking likes or whatever all had connections growing up not mm. connections like oh I know people but like. You know, like, I could give a shit. I don't give a fuck if people like me online or not. Mm. And I had a very stable childhood. I lived in a in a home with my parents. And they didn't get divorced. And I didn't have to bounce from place to place. I didn't have no parents. I didn't have a deadbeat parent. I had friends. I had, you know, family that loved me. Like, I, I was a very, like, I had a very solid stable upbringing and i feel like a lot of the people that i know that are like that don't give a shit about what people feel on on social media Mm -hmm. and and so i think that's part of it and i think i think it's an age thing too right Mm -hmm. i think and i feel this way about um like like 
I, I, it's, it's, it, speaking of pet peeves, it's a fucking pet peeve of mine that all, like, the, the boomers are like, oh, they'd fucking rather be on their phones than actually, like, living their life. And it's like, yeah, because they're idiots. <laughs> they're dumb. They're stupid. They mm. are. I got a, I, I got my first device. It wasn't a phone, but it was an iPod Touch. So it was basically a phone, except for the phone call part. Yeah, yeah. Um, I got one of those when I was, like, 13. And yeah, I was same. on it all was the time. To that I was on it all the time. And yep. it was really fun. And then I hit, like, 16. And I was like, oh, yeah. I don't want to do that anymore. <laughs> like, I had a moment of introspection. And I was like, yeah. Life is more than just being on my phone all the time. Mm. And I feel like we don't give people enough credit for being able to say that and make that choice for themselves it's like yeah okay if you're 11 you don't know any better and you're gonna fucking you're gonna just do the thing that gives you the dopamine hit over and over and over again right like like fucking you know i don't know what any of the games are nowadays fucking it was like you know like Candy Crush, fucking. Oh, you mean phone game? Yeah, like on a phone game. Yeah, like a yeah, mobile I have no game. Idea. Fucking Temple Runner, Candy Crush, Angry Birds, Subway fucking Doodle, Surfers or something. Doodle Jump. Fucking Doodle Jump was my favorite. Flappy I Bird. Love That's a very old dude. I got Flappy Bird and then it got taken down and I still had it. And like mm. everyone's like, you should sell your iPod for like a million dollars. And I'm like, <laughs> all right. Cool. Because they people were buying them. People yeah, were yeah, buying yeah. phones that had Flappy Bird on them for an insane amount of money. Oh, I'm sure. Um, which is weird, but whatever. But, like, yeah, like, at some point, I really think we don't give people enough. Like, when you're 17 or 18, you're a legal adult. You should be able to have the presence of, unless, like, obviously, I'm sorry, let me back that up. If you're a neurotypical 18-year-old, you should be able to have the presence of mind to put your fucking phone down and live your life. Right. Mm. Like if you're still on, if you're still addicted to your phone Mm. at that point, I feel like that's at least a little bit your fault. Mm. Um, And maybe that's an unpopular opinion. I don't give a shit. Um, I, I think we don't hold people accountable enough in that regard. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, oh, they're always on their phone. It's like, yeah, fucking eventually they're going to realize that there's more to life than that. And they're either going to put it down and be better or not. Yeah, right. And then at that point, what are you going to do? <laughs> um, right now we're at the point where people so, are not sure what to do. Because a lot of people, I think, do think that that is going to be their life. Because um, mm-hmm. there's a lot of, you know, TikTok stars and, like, I mean, fucking look at Logan Paul and Jake Doucher or whatever. Like, th- that's the prime example of people that are never going to grow out of it. Right. And, you know... The fact that they're successful means that there's going to be a wave of people following them thinking they don't have to get out of it either. Which, yeah. I mean, whatever. If you can be successful being a complete, you know, trash bag of a human, I, I guess more power to you. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah. I, I feel like it's not, I, I don't know. Because it, it feels weird for me to say anything about it because l- literally just last night, n- nope, Friday night on your stream, um, mm-hmm. I was saying how it's amazing that we live in a world where like, I was talking about how Cumtown is making so much money off of mm-hmm. podcasts. I'm like, it's amazing that we even live in a world where that's possible, that mm-hmm. you can be extremely su- successful talking into a mic twice a week and yep. not even having to leave your house. Um, but that comes with the the bad side too, right? Where like... You don't have to, like, they don't really, like, I guess what I should say is the people that I listen to that are successful at this stuff, or, like, watch or whatever, are successful because of who they are, if that makes sense. Yes. Like, they don't, they, they don't put on an act. They're ad, talented. Like, yeah. They're talented. Like, I watch Tomato, Robaz, Town, fucking whatever. They're all just doing their thing. That's what they're like, and that's what they mm. do, and they're six, and it's great. But, like, there's the wave of people that have absolutely no interesting facts about them, like the Paul brothers, that then just do controversial shit in order to, uh, like, you know, the thing that everyone seems to forget about Logan Paul is that he was in the Japanese suicide forest and made fun of a dude that hanged himself and, like, played Mm -hmm. with a dead body. And it's like, yep. there's nothing forgivable about that. They don't deserve to be successful. And the internet forgot because they have enough success and enough fucking disgusting followers that they just battered down anyone that tried to trash them. And yep. 
I mean, I know that's just the bad side. It's obviously... I, I was going to say obviously the uh, small minority, but I, I feel like nowadays to be successful, you really do have to be controversial somehow, unfortunately. Hey, like, any press is good press, quote unquote. You know, yeah, like, and it, it sucks because like I just realized I was gonna say it probably isn't, but all the people that are kind of just doing their thing and successful at it were successful because they were doing that before you had to be controversial to get noticed. Mm-hmm. Like you could just be a good person or fun or funny or whatever and get noticed. Nowadays, not yeah. really. Um, yeah, yeah. But, well. You know, so and no, so I think I think part of it too, right, is that I I heard I forget what it was. I was listening to a podcast. I forget who it was, um, but there was they had a guest on, and the person was like, "Yeah, you know, you know, fucking twenty years ago, kids wanted to be like, you know, like engineers or journalists or fucking, you know, like pick a pick a fucking profession. Yeah, you know, ki- so, kids wanted to be engineers." Astro- yeah, astronauts, athletes, per- journalists, blah, blah. And nowadays they want to be YouTubers and, like, and, and like ask any fucking kid what they want to do. You know, not any kid, but yeah. so many of our young generation are like, oh, I want to be an influencer. Like, I want to be TikTok famous. And it's like, Dude. I think, uh, right, I think part of that is... You don't know what that entails. <laughs> no, well, no, that is kind of what I'm saying, right? Like, it... it it offered like the idea of being TikTok, like the come town thing, right? Like they're making yeah. what, like ninety grand a month off of Patreon, <laughs> yeah. like an absurd amount of money. And even though that's in theory, I, I don't necessarily hope for this, but mm. that is going to be a relatively short lived thing. They're not going to be making ninety grand a of month life. off no, of I Patreon for the rest of their lives, yeah, right? Yeah. They're going to be making ninety grand off of Patreon, maybe like another five, six for years, like maybe. yeah, for another five, six years. But like the idea of being super, like like I think people have this idea that if you're super famous and if you're well known, you don't actually have to do work to be Correct. successful. Yeah. Right. And so like the idea of being an influencer, of being TikTok famous, being YouTube famous, being Twitch famous, whatever, is a shortcut. And I'm going to try to avoid the route here of being old man <laughs> that's pissed off that kids don't want to work nowadays. Oh, no, yeah. But, but like yeah, the yeah. idea that like, oh, if you're if you're uh, if you're an electrician. You have to go to school. Well, not like school, school, but like trade school, right. learn how to be an electrician and then work the next 50 years of your life <laughs> and then reti- and then retire finally. Whereas yeah. like, oh, if I can make like three million off of, you know, being TikTok famous for a year or YouTube, I don't know if that's how that works. But like, if, no, you yeah, know, yeah, if, yeah. if I get if I blow up on Twitch and I'm getting like 4000 subscribe or 4000 viewers a stream that are donating and subscribing and supporting me on Patreon and I can stack a couple million dollars in a couple of years and then just coast on that. Like, yeah, yeah. how is that not a better or sorry, how is that not a more appealing, appealing. thing yep. <laughs> than working for the rest of your life? Like, well, the the funny thing is, right, is for all of the people that are successful, right? I can't name any of them. I, I don't know who's TikTok famous or whatever. Yeah, same. <laughs> but like, let let's just say, you know, mm. character X has made a million and a half dollars in the past two years. Yeah. They're probably like riding that high of like, this is it. Like, I've done it. I've peaked. I'm yeah. good to go. And yeah. they're going to spend all their fucking money over yes. the next three years and yes, save none of it. And then yes, they're going to they say, are. what do I have to do now? And it's like, They work. are going to be Here back <laughs> to being a regular ass person in a couple of years and they're going to win. Yeah. Yep. No, and definitely agree. I mean, there's yeah. going to be a very small handful that are smart enough to like get an accountant and they're going to invest that money and they will coast the rest of their lives. And that's fucking... Cutie. That's got to be awesome. But, fucking cutie. Yeah. I'm a cutie. Real <laughs> quick, here's a tangent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Steve brought yeah, it up. Yeah. Um, yep. For those of you that don't know, I mean, he's still relatively, he still gets like 1,500 viewers to stream, which is yeah. nothing to scoff at. Um, no. So for those of you that don't know about the pie, um, he was a league pro, and he he didn't make much money. Like, you can ask anyone that's in uh, pro league right now. I mean, I know you don't, can't ask them literally, obviously, but um, if there's interviews with a lot of them. That, like, you know, how much are you making as a pro? And most of them will say barely minimum wage. And it's true. They don't get paid shit really to be a pro, but what you get off of that is like the 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 name that comes with it. Like you are considered a professional of that game, and that's going to draw in a crowd. And then you just stream or do whatever you want YouTube, both. However you want to expand on yourself as like a marketable item. 
And what Cutie did was exactly that. He was a pro. He started Twitch streaming. And he made, I don't remember, I want to say roughly like two and a half million over like three years fucking streaming, which is awesome. Um, But he literally, he still talks about it now. Every once in a while, someone will ask on his stream like, oh, you know, how do you recommend like saving money or whatever? And he's like, get an investor, like do it. Because that's what he did. He, I I don't know what exactly, I, I don't know if it's stocks or NFTs or, you know, bitcoin i I don't know specifically because i mean i'm not really privy to that but he has all or probably like a half i think he said he invested half or more of his money in whatever this accountant that he really trusted to like handle his money like he did that he did exactly what that man said and that that's what he's living off of like for the rest of his life he's set all he has to do is i guess just not get a gambling addiction and spend all of his savings or have like a weird thing where for some that basically what i'm saying is do what he did if you somehow hit the lottery pay off whatever you have to pay off immediately if you're in desperate need of it and invest it but it it works it it's such a look down upon thing nowadays to save your money which is weird because it used to be that's what you're supposed to do is save money but now Everything is so, everything is so fucking materialistic, and you have to prove that you have money for some reason. Like, oh, I just made five hundred thousand off of fucking whatever. I guess I better buy a three hundred thousand dollar watch. And it's like, okay, uh, why though? That watch is never going to be worth that money again. So it's not like you could say, oh, I have this watch, and now I could just sell it if I ever need that much money back. It's not worth it now that it's been used, and. All you're doing is hurting yourself. It, it just it, it makes no sense to me to flaunt money in any way. Not just as like, oh, I have fat cash stacks, but also as like, I have this money. Look what I bought. It's like, yeah, you bought it. That money's gone now. Good job, I guess. Um, but anyways, back to the point of you should just save your frick frack and patty whack and money if you do manage to hit it big for some reason. Um, Dude, actually, though. It, I forget what were we talking about before that. Uh, how I was, people are using fucking oh, famousness yeah, like, to get out yeah, of doing so work. So the whole point of that was just like, yeah, if you're going to be part of the one percent that are smart enough, that's awesome because you're set for life. You're good to go. Yep. Um, but for the rest of you out there, I wish you luck, and I will see you at nine to five in a yes, couple sir. years. Yep. <laughs> yes, sir. Granted, Holy I don't shit. really work a nine to five, which good and bad. I'll see you <laughs> nine to five. Oh, that's right. I guess I started Ugh. my job officially, everyone. Um, in the sense of I'm actually Fancy. in the field like regularly. And, yes, uh, bitch. It's a weird thing. It's not. Uh, it's not a nine to five. It's a uh, whatever hours you're going to be working. In the sense of like, obviously you're going to get compensated. It's not like oh, you're going to get paid mm-hmm. this much. No yeah, yeah. Get, um, and work. Get paid for yeah, forty. Yeah. Work seventy. Exactly, but some days are going to be really bad days, and some are going to be good, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. I don't really, like, the way it works, basically, is if you work, like, a majority of, like, a 40-hour work week in three days, like, if you work, like, 23 hours over the first, like, Monday, Tuesday, for, God forbid, your cases are that long, um, Mm -hmm. your manager's going to give you probably the next two days off or something, if if, if it's affordable, and not affordable money-wise, but in the sense of, like, as long as the whole you know, team's workload isn't too big. You're probably getting two days off after that. So yeah. you have two days of hell, but then also the managers are like, we're not going to drive our employees into the ground. They need to exist also. And so they <laughs> give you time. And Imagine so like, that. Yeah. So it's cool. Um, but yeah, you're cool. I just talked for like six minutes straight. So what, what do you, what do you want to talk about? Steve? <laughs> <laughs> huh? Oh boy. What do I want to talk about? <laughs> Steve, if you could have a meal appear in front of you right now, what would it be? Ha, uh, ha, uh, Brian, how could you do this to me? Um, <laughs> uh, beef bourguignon. Really? Okay. Dude. Beef I, I bourguignon. Would, oh, yeah. I would fuck up some bourguignon right now, which is beef burgundy if you're not familiar with the... It's, oh, is it's that what like, it means? I didn't yeah. even know that. I yeah, made the, it. Just didn't... Yeah, yeah it's, it's a French dish, uh, for French name for beef burgundy, and it's beef... Wow, um, in like as it's like kind of like beef stew, but with like a lot of red wine, a lot of Burgundy wine. Um, mm-hmm. 
So it's very rich and very like bright, but also like fatty because the, they usually use like chuck roast or whatever. So it's yeah, yeah. it's it's big time, tasty meats, um, and it's got you know carrots and mushrooms and usually it's like served over either rice or potato, um, like some kind of starch. Mm-hmm. So so I've had it with potatoes. I've done it myself with rice, and oh my god. I uh, preferred so, over potato so myself. Good. Yeah, personally. Potatoes. See, I what, I, I did it over rice myself? because I feel like rice reheats better than potato. So like it does that's for sure. <laughs> so like when I'm making it for like the week, as opposed to like oh I'm just making it for dinner yeah, tonight. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Oh, dude, beef burgundy, mm, beef bourguignon, fuck me up. What would you have <laughs> if a meal were to appear right in front of you right now? Hmm. Honestly, probably just a big fat bowl of spicy miso ramen with like chashu. Spicy spaghetti. That sounds great. Which, uh, I could get some technically. I live uh, right down the street from a ramen place. Yes, you do. They don't deliver, or I should say, I don't know. I it doesn't. I can't get it delivered on like Grubhub or DoorDash, Ooh, which is annoying. Right. I think I'd have to call right. the restaurant and like give them my address every time. Not, it's not a big deal. I just am lazy. Yep. <laughs> don't do that. Yep. I don't like talking to people, so I try to order from Correct. DoorDash and Grubhub whenever possible. <laughs> and I pay like an extra like twelve bucks a meal for it, but like. Yeah, right. <laughs> fucking i get to be yeah. anti-social that's right i get to not have to talk to people so say la vie baby say la vie life is cruel treat you, treat you unfairly. unfairly even so even so an egg hey god must there be. must be egg roll you complete me oh god we can talk about first season of spongebob because <laughs> <laughs> we started watching that last night again ryan who um, are your top three spongebob characters Oh God! Patrick Plankton and Squidward. That's really good. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's very good. Um, Not mine that would SpongeBob actually... isn't good, but yeah. no, but SpongeBob almost is kind of the. I don't want to call him the straight man because he's clearly like got a lot of goofy and charm to yeah, him. Yeah. But like, compared to some, like he exists to let the others work around him. Yeah, and and boy, do they work, um, <laughs> dude. Uh, yeah, no, I think I would have to go Patrick Plankton and either Mr. Krabs or Squidward. No, Squidward. It would be Squidward. Mine's the same as yours. I love I Mr. Krabs, but like, no, you know what? I would actually go. I would actually go Patrick Squidward Plankton. Plankton. Plankton is my fab. I love Langton so much. He's amazing. I went to college. I went to college. It's like, yeah, you're right. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, you got it, Ace. (laughs) Fucking, huh. Well, everyone, (laughs) I think that is our cue. We did it. To to, to tap out for the day. This is a technically difficult episode that you won't get to see. Well, parts of it. But uh, Brian's computer pooped the bed and has been laggy, so I don't have video currently. He doesn't have video. Big sad. We don't get to see his beautiful face. Aww. Huh, remember, remember when you are at your nine to five this week? That hey. to to become TikTok famous, you must hydrate or dehydrate. You must also stay hecking. You must die by the egg. You must stay fresh like a bag of cheese. And you didn't ask for us, guys, but we are coming in hot. Enjoy your week. We will see you all on the flip side. It's the next episode. Uh, ha! Pasta, hasta le posti. Pasti! I like pasta. Dude, pasta good. I'll fuck up. Dude, I got some downstairs with sauce on it. Let's fucking go. That's cool, if it's true. What up, dipshits? Thanks for listening to this episode of The Heckin' Call. Thank you to our super talented graphic designer and composer, Rachel Cody, for our intro jingle and cover art. Thank you to our guy, Sandorin, for the Weird Dreams music. You can find us online. Our Some of our shit has changed. We are now at festival underscore YT 
on Twitter, capital F, capital Y, capital T. That is everything Heck and Call, everything Stoves Streaming, and everything Stoves YouTube, which should be debuting any day now. You can send us fan mail at the Heck and Call Podcast at gmail.com and find us on YouTube under the Heck and Call Podcast. Until next week, this is your boy Steve on behalf of your boy Brian. You didn't ask for us, but we're coming in hot. See you next week, everybody. Always Always